Welcome to the news, and this is uh, you with me, Robert Kalua. The headlines this up. Speaker of Parliament, Catherine Gutanehara, tests positive for COVID-19. Government says local councils will not be affected following interdiction of top officials of alleged abuse of COVID-19 funds. ESCOM needs 5 billion kwacha to connect new customers to the national power grid. And in sports and analyst ages, Super League outfit Mighty Wanderers consider commercializing to become self-reliant. Now the news in detail. Speaker of Parliament Catherine Gutanehara has been tested positive for COVID-19, but she is asymptomatic. Leader of the House Richard Chimwendo Banda has confirmed this to us in an interview. He explains. It happened that uh, two members of our workers in the House tested positive, and uh, she deliberately wanted to also take the test herself. So she went, and uh, she's okay. She's doing well. She's not sick, but uh, she did that as a... Uh, somebody who is more you know um thinking more about any other person if you if you somebody was staying within the house has tested positive or somebody have been in close contact has, has tested positive as a responsible person you really need to go to the hospital and check yourself and then isolate yourself uh, she was available on monday but she has not been in parliament since monday to, to date we have the both deputy speakers available to take care of parliament Deputy Minister of Local Government Halima Daoud has assured Malawians that operations in local councils will not be affected following the interdiction of district commissioners and chief executives over alleged abuse of 6.2 billion kwacha COVID-19 response funds. The minister spoke at a press briefing at Capitol Hill in Ninongwe where she reminded Malawians to keep working with the councils to keep their surroundings clean and green under the drive keeping Malawi clean and green again amid this COVID-19. Alex Banda reports. Following the interdiction of district commissioners and chief executives for local authorities by President Lazar Stegwela last week, Minister of Local Government Halima Dawoodi for the first time came out to assure Malawians that council operations will not be affected. The minister, speaking at a press briefing on Thursday at Capitol Hill in Lirongwe, said new officers have been identified for caretaking. The minister also appealed to the citizenry to keep observing the national clean-up days set on second Fridays of every month in adherence to COVID-19 guidelines. As we've seen, it's just gone quiet. Other people have stopped cleaning their, 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 their surroundings. So we are here today to remind them that we're still doing the cleaning up regardless of the COVID-19. So I was like telling Malawians that we can do the cleaning in small groups. What we're trying to do is to avoid congestion. So small groups can still do the cleaning, especially people can still clean the, the compounds. Interim leader of Movement for Environmental Action, Matthews Malata, has since appealed to district and city councils to invest more in clean-up exercises. They can invest in this infrastructure so that they, we have it in our strategic uh, places because they have the responsibility to make sure that all places are devoid of these huge piles of garbage. They must also go and collect the trash, which we see in most of these places. For those that are participating in the cleanup activity, they must follow the COVID-19 precautionary measures. In November last year, President Lazar Seguela launched the National Cleanup Day, which is observed on every second Friday of each month for three hours. For Zodiac, this is Alex Banda. Minister of Energy Newton Kambala says the Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi ESCOM needs about 5 billion kwacha to connect new customers who already paid to be connected to the national power grid. Speaking in Parliament, the minister indicated that financial challenges have led to ESCOM's failure to connect scores of customers who paid for the service from 2017. He said the ministry has engaged Treasury for a possible financial bailout and developed a master plan to address challenges in provision of electricity. More in this report, filed by Winston Kaimira. When answering questions from some legislators in Parliament, Minister of Energy Newton Gambala said it is lamentable that this country remains behind on access to electricity as only 11% of people are connected. He said government plans to raise the percentage to 70 through various interventions. 
the minister said only 41% of residents have access to electricity in Longwe despite being the The country's capital city, he said financial challenges are preventing the electricity supply corporation of Malawi, ESCOM, from making new connections. The minister said through a special initiative, his ministry has instructed ESCOM to ensure 80% of people waiting to be connected are assisted by June this year. He said for this to be achieved, his ministry has engaged the treasury requesting for funds. A lot of customers are paid for connection, but they are struggling to get them connected because they don't have capacity to buy materials. And they, we came in as a ministry uh, to assist in finding some uh, funds. And we rolled out a project in January this year, which is last month, uh, to make sure that by end of June, uh, all these customers are connected. If not all, but at least 80% of them are connected. Kambala has since disclosed that his ministry has instructed ESCOM to cover all earthing cables with concrete blocks to deal with vandalism. Meanwhile, the Minister of Energy continues reaching out to people in rural areas with electricity connectivity through the Malay Rural Electrification Program, MAREP. This is Winston Kaimira for Zodiac in Longwe. Area in Parliament government was taken to task as legislators asked the Minister of Homeland Security Richard Chimwendo Banda on interventions being made to address the challenges of dilapidated structures in police stations. For instance, Zomba Central lawmaker Besta Awali asked government to construct a new Zomba police station, which he said is in a bad shape. Details in this report by Winston Kaimira. The Thursday parliamentary proceedings started with questions from legislators going to various government ministries. The Minister of Homeland Security received a number of questions bordering on the poor state of police stations in the country. Parliamentarian for Balaga West constituency, Beth Andewere, asked the Ministry to consider constructing a police unit in her constituency and houses for police officers at the district police station. A similar request came from Zomba Central constituency legislator, Pesta Awali, who called for the renovation of structures at the Zomba police station. Responsible Minister Richard Jimendo Banda admitted that most structures in police stations in the country are in bad condition, saying government will address this. He said for now, the ministry is completing construction works of Planta police station and soon Zomba, Mangochi and Luchenza will be considered. On security matters, the minister said police are making good progress in addressing security labs in Long West Area 25. He was responding to a question from MP for the area, Alfred Gia, on challenges people are facing due to increasing criminal acts. Other questions went to ministers of gender, youth and sports, as well as energy. This is Winston Kaimira reporting for Zodiac. Learners in both public, uh, primary and secondary schools across the country are not attending classes as tussling over COVID-19 risk allowance continues between government and teachers. The teachers through their grouping Teachers Union of Malawi too have vowed to continue with their step away after government through the presidential task force on COVID-19 rejected their request for the allowance. Our reporters have been checking the situation and we start with Tawera Kumwenda in Msuzu. I visited some schools in, in Zuzu City where I found them closed. The premises look abandoned because classes are, are not going on and the staff rooms are closed. Uh, some teachers I spoke to who are to anonymity though have indicated that um, they are currently still doing the stay away and are waiting for official communication from Teachers Union of Malawi on whether the stay away will continue or not. Uh, this follows the, the communication by government that no allowances will be given to teachers. So uh, some schools have also indicated that meanwhile while they're waiting for the uh, official communication from Teachers Union of Malawi and government on the way forward, they're looking for local solutions on how they will be running their schools. So mostly I can say that uh, teachers, schools here are still closed, classes are not uh, not happening and there was no uh, sight of teachers or learners in most of the schools that I visited. From Mzuzu, we now go to Kasungu where there is no Nkubi. Teachers here in Kasungu are containing the city in, in which they are demanding COVID-19 risk allowances. Our sport checks in a number of schools including Chitiba, Changhanga and Buma primarily has revealed that no teaching and learning was taking place on Thursday. Pupils we spoke to have told us that a few teachers who availed themselves in the campuses sent them back home. However, some pupils were still hanging around 
to past hours. Some of the pupils who spoke to us complained that this is negatively affecting uh, their right to education, considering that they already spent about five weeks uh, during the COVID-19 uh, holiday, which the government instituted recently. And they were optimistic that uh, the reopening of schools would help them to cover up uh, the syllabus, which has been lost for the past few weeks. We haven't managed to speak to relevant authorities in the district as regards to uh, what they make out of this sit-in and that uh, government made it stand clear that uh, teachers may not be considered for the COVID-19 risk allowance. And Hastings Jimani is our reporter in Mulanje. I actually visited Mulanje Boma Community Day Center School and in Jeza Primary School. In both schools, there are no classes and the uh, like at Mulan de Boma Community Center School, I found two teachers, and the, at Njeza Primary School, there, there was one teacher. Actually, the three said they are continuing their strike, and the, what they are waiting now is uh, official statement or communication from teachers, you know, of Malawi Tom on the way forward. But what they are saying now is the strike continues. The Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, says it has expelled its two members for alleged assault of the top class of the party during a press briefing in Dilongwe. Party spokesperson Brown Mpingenjira, who is one of the leaders who were assaulted, has confirmed the development and identified the two as Alex Mawaya and Alex Jumala. A few days ago, police arrested Mawaya in connection with the matter, and we spoke to Mpingenjira. It is Uh, Central Committee uh, discussed this matter on Monday and Tuesday and decided that uh, we need to instill discipline in the party, uh, that we need to root out any uh, 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 traces of violence within the party. Uh, we don't want to be a party that is uh, 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 associated with violence. disrepute will be dealt with uh, in the strongest terms possible. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. Welcome back. Before we continue, let's have a look at the top stories. Speaker of Parliament Catherine Gotanihara test positive for COVID-19. Government says local council.
commence next year are expected to create about 2,000 jobs once completed. Meanwhile, government has engaged the Export Development Fund, which is working with Africa Import and Export Bank to attract investors for the projects. Steve Zimba reports. In Lilongwe, the industrial park will be constructed in Area 55 after Maguero Primary School, a few kilometers away from Kamozo International Airport, and in Blanta, government has secured land for the project Catherine Gotanihara test positive for COVID-19 and government says local councils will not be affected following interdiction of top officials of alleged abuse of COVID-19 funds. ESCOM needs 5 billion kwacha to connect new customers to the national power grid. And in sports, an analyst edges Super League outfit Mighty Wanderers to consider commercialising.